On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, I'll be with good friend Harry Vernon III and fishing the offshore waters of Miami. Bring them on there, Harry. Nice size king. Oh, whoa, have a look. Miami tuna. Hey, there's a hammerhead on the balloon right here. Right here, look. Look at a hammerhead. Oh, it's jumping. Sailfish. All right. Sailfish. And as always, it's going to be one exciting episode you do not want to miss. George Bover almost world of saltwater fishing, celebrating 21 years of fishing television excellence. Big fish don't stand a chance. Harry Vernon III is a lifelong friend. We grew up fishing off Miami. In fact, he and I are both Miami natives, and we've done a ton of shows together. Yeah. We've had some great inshore Miami-oriented shows where we've crushed the groupers trolling, a uh, big tarpon on Rapala CD18 plugs, and I even took him to the northern end of the bay where I grew up fishing and put him on the monster snook. I'm excited because I know there's good quality fish to be caught out here and uh, it's gonna be just a fun trip with uh, my buddy George. Our plan was to go off and put a kite up and fish the zones between maybe 300 feet on the deep side, work our way in about 90 feet of water and work that broad window trying to get the pelagics like blackfin tuna, which were around in good supply just weeks earlier. Uh, still a good shot at getting a sailfish or two. The kings were around and the ever-present wahoo as well. But we were gung-ho for it. He and I grew up here and if things happen to be slow, hopefully we know just the right adjustments to put together a pretty decent trip. He had already lined up goggle eyes, pilchards, everything ready to go for the day. We've got all the bait in the world, but we don't have any wind. So it's gonna be really tough to put a kite up today. Uh, I'm gonna put uh, pilchard out on that 12 pound. You wanna bet that's gonna get drilled? Typically, when you're searching for fish, you're trying to find zones where these fish are traveling. We'll start out probably in about 300 feet of water and drift in and see what we can do uh, and see what we can muster up because uh, we can do it. We've been fishing out here long enough. We know some good spots, some good areas that we know where to drift over some wrecks, some good structure, and I think we'll be able to pull something up. Well, initially, he bent that rod pretty good. Yeah, he did. He took it. It's a gog, a live gog, shaking right. his head. Oh, there we go. Halfway down, see what we got. See something, oh shoot, there we go. All right, the sinker's almost there, so I can almost get to the breakaway, get it off. And Come on, grab it. We gotta turn that rod to me. Come on. Uh, if he can learn to turn the rod to the right. There you go. Okay, there you go. Not too big. Well, still a mystery fish at this point. I guess I should have never said that. Uh, here you go, you got, oh, it's a tuna or a king or a killer got king or something. A tuna, a king or a what? It's a combination. This is a kingfish. Oh, I mean, it just grabbed by his tail. What do you mean grabbed by the tail? Let me sleep down here, get a little lower. There you go. All right, there's, you wanna get that hook out? <laughs> Let me get you things out. All right. All right, buddy boy. Get out of here. Woo. Miami King. I was halfway down. Here, thanks for renting me your Yeah, pliers. sure, no problem. I don't have enough. I'll of them. send you a bill. Thanks. All right. All right, well, it's a start. The bite slowed down. We were thinking about taking the wire back off. Now, if we taken the wire off and we put the mono or fluoro, it got cut off, we'd be coming, why do we take the wire off? That's right. Fishing off of Miami, you get a lot of toothy critters. So we went ahead and went with uh, short, tracer of wire, it's about probably a foot, foot and a half long. And uh, normally when, when the fish are chewing, you, you, you've got some good fishing, and you have a good chance of catching those toothy critters. And uh, that's just the way we, we started started out, and it worked out pretty good, because we were able to pull off a couple of kings. How you doing, George? Good, I thought for sure you had had yours. Yeah, this one got hit hard, screaming line. That's either uh, Bonita or Blackton. I think the one we both got drilled on it. See what it is? Hey, well, here's a leader coming up. It's straight down, I can't get a glimpse of it. Uh, what do we got here? Long kingfish. <laughs> what, the king? King. Looked like a barracuda to me. Looks like a king to I me. I can tell that reflection. Yeah, it's a nice size king. You want to take this for a smokehouse? Yeah, why not? It's something to stick. I got to practice, right? Uh, somebody on this boat does. I, and judging by your past performance record, 
and videotapes. <laughs> How come I get now? I used to be so I don't confident. Hear I used to be so confident with you with a gaff, and as of late, I just get so nervous when you grab that thing. I think I might be more nervous than you are, but you got to get him up here first. Don't you worry. I'm finessing the fish. Okay. Nice fish. Bring him off there, Harry. Nice, nice king. Go, bud. Put a smoke hang on him. And look at that. I did not put the wire trace on this, if you notice. I went straight no to the way. fluorocarbon. That's Don't why figure. I was getting nervous. I didn't want to tell you that. Thanks. Because we had that little debate whether it would stick with the wire or not. This thing's got teeth, right? You got him? Yeah, hold not... the gaff. Just hold the gaff. Nice pair of pliers. Where'd you get them? <laughs> Out of your pocket. I know. <laughs> George Bull for Almost World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. We'll be right back. I'm fishing off Miami with Harry Vernon III. We're drifting live baits for kingfish, dolphin, and sailfish. So we had the bases covered. And the one thing that we were fighting was the lack of wind. We put the extra light wind kite up, held for a little bit, then the wind went away. So it forced us to fish, at least on this particular day, most of it, without having that kite up. But no problem. We stuck to our live bait pattern and just started making drifts. What do you got? Feels like another king. Another kinger? Yep. Not pulling very hard. I did initially, and, and so we got definitely. You sure it's not that hammerhead? I would hope a hammer would pull a lot harder than this. All uh, right, yep, king. I see something silver. You want to go ahead and tell this one? Well, we can't. You got to bring it back here. Now, be careful. I'll tire them out a little for you. Uh, I don't mind that at all. <laughs> We're letting this guy go? Yeah, just tail him and have a look, and we can let him go. Oh, man. I know. <laughs> okay. He wants me to grab it by the tail. I don't like grabbing any. Anytime you grab something by the tail, normally they freak out, and they take off. Oh, a little practice on that, Harry. Obviously, I still try to grab him by the tail, and it, you know, then fish takes off. So I finally just grabbed it by the leader and held it up, grabbed the fish, and, and pulled it up. Is that what you wanted? Yeah, okay, let me unhook him. We'll let him go. I, I, with you, that's about as close to perfection we're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> you took my pliers, that's why I'd use them. I didn't take your pliers. And you had to borrow my pliers, and I gave them you, and you put them in your pocket. Like, like any day now, it'll be great. You know what? <laughs> no, no, what kind of right there is pulled out? It's, it's a lot of fun. George drives me nuts when we're fishing out there, but it's good. There, here's the ocean here. This is the ocean. So he's got to go that way. <laughs> open up the cooler? <laughs> How dead is he? He's got to. All right, let's open up the cooler. We'll, we'll send him to the smokehouse, too. Yes. Hey, there's a hammerhead on the balloon right here. Right here, look. Look at a hammerhead. Harry, look. On the balloon, there's a hammerhead. He's eating a ha balloon? Go ahead and get him. Hook him. And here comes hammerhead shark around the boat. George loves his little balloon. He puts that balloon out there off the top. And uh, unfortunately, the hammerheads were a lot. There was a bunch of hammerheads out there. <laughs> What's that? That's so I think, funny. I think it's a very interesting catch. You're doing a good job with him, though. Ah, oh, great. He's a hammerhead, OK? Check this out. Is he? Yes, he is. Look at him. Look, look at the little T-head coming up. I'm just Check glad for head. one thing right now, George. <laughs> it's a little one. Let me get down here, get some gloves on. Remember, he can't see you. I got to get him right in the square to the center. Right? He's right here. Oh, there's your hammer. There you go, bud. That is an odd looking fish, isn't it? You wonder how proficient they could be at trying to catch fish like that with those eyes. Look at that. How many of those have we had come around that eat uh, our baits we, today? I know, right? Woo! So the breeze starts to barely come back. I mean, just barely enough to try to get an extra wind kite up. And it was a challenge, but we got it up there. We still have all the flat lines going. And I said, man, we got room to throw one pilchard. So I grabbed a 12 pound spinner and threw it out. Uh, and just put a pilchard out there. What long after that, that line starts screaming off that spinner. What's it feel like? Hard to say. And I mean, it, this fish is heading to the Bahamas. Hopefully it's a, hopefully it's a big black fin. Isn't that crazy how the fish always hit the smallest rod? I'm telling you, there's something to it. So in the back of my mind, I've opened big black fins. I mean, we were here fishing a week earlier and caught three or four beautiful black fins in a 20, 25 pound class. So you're hoping you have one of those. Oh, I see color down there. Vern, take a look. He's coming up real close. We're going to get him. Whoa, fish. And as you're fighting, you start to feel that, that 
typical Bonita pumping kind of action. Bonita? Oh, big old Bonita. Big old Bonita. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> we were hoping it was going to be a big black thing. I mean, this was our was, was one of our things that we really wanted to get that day. And, uh, just unfortunately, it was a big old uh, ugly bonehead Bonita. Oh, whoa, have a look. Come on up here. The size of that neater. Oh, unreal, huh? Miami tuna. Well, you got Good a lot of bait, one, bottom bait, and everything. He's, yeah. he's definitely swallowed that. What's down there? Okay, here, right. I'll clip them right here. Get them on the fish box. Oh, well. Darn, well, hey, it, was, it woke us up. George Pokeromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by Simrad, the new Simrad NSS Evo 3S chart plotter. The best just got better. Rapala Coastal, another great day. Suffix, always use the best line. Starbright Book Care Products, blending technology and performance since 1973. We'll be right back. Harry Vernon III and I happened upon Dolphin chasing schools of flying fish in the teeth of a major rip. We're fishing off Miami. So I'm looking offshore and I see some birds diving. So I said, let's just run over and, and, and take a peek at it. And they're hauling butt. And sure enough, here we are, big school of dolphin. And they're just flying to the south. They're moving fast. These fish are flying. Look how I'm incredibly fast. You see all the flyers up ahead pushing flyers, and then they're up there on top. You gotta wonder if something's underneath them. Oh, there's something. These guys are just motoring. So we're able to throw pilchers, and we'd get one on, catch him, get another one on, catch him. So it was like picking away, but they wouldn't. These fish would not stop. They just kept on going. He's here. He's oh. not a big one. He's a he's a schoolie. Flip him. <laughs> I don't want to break him off. All right. There you have it. <laughs> Boom, yeah, chuckalaga. How, how far they moved. All right. Look how fast they're going. Though. These fish are just screaming. So Harry gets a school fish out of it. We race back up ahead of the birds and school fish. There's flying fish showering. As long as we could get up ahead of these fast moving dolphin, we'd find action. All right, buddy, your turn. That looks like a pompano dolphin, doesn't it? You know, normally they hang out next to the boat. You, you'll bail 20, 30 dolphin in no time at all. But these guys, for whatever reason, they were on a mission. They were heading to the Keys, I guess, but uh, they were moving. So it was, it was tough fishing. Odd shaped head. Good thing you use those circle hooks. And let them go. Yeah, this guy's got to uh, let that one go. Pompano dolphin. Is that a unique one? Are they shape? It's crazy. Pompano it's dolphin caught out of Miami. Only people who live Look in South Florida know that one. Because we're not near Pompano. That's why we fish. We're certainly not comedians. One at a time, it seems like we're getting these guys. You get in there and you, you pick one. It's, oh, wait a you get picked up. Oh, I think I'm getting. Oh, that's something. mine's crossing. Yeah, rod right tip to rod right tip here. I think that's mine coming over here. Here, rod right tip, rod right tip. OK, you're clean. OK, cool. I'll try to get them down this side of the boat here. Oh. Little ribbler. <clears throat> where did the birds go? Oh, they're all over here. How far off? Right where that other boat's going. All uh, right, maybe we'll push them this way. Look at those electric blues and greens in this. Look at those pecs. He's lit. No others around, so I guess I'm going to get him in, try to get no, back in the birds. No, these fish are just moving, man. These, these guys are moving and moving and moving. Hey, buddy. <laughs> no, you did not. Oh! No, you did not. I knew better. You know why? I'm going to show you something. And it, and it comes down to laziness. Look, 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 look. I had this here, and I said, I'm going to grab this net, and I'm going to scoop them up. But that would have been too easy and smart. Well, right? I'm not going to say anything. You, you, know don't, you don't have to, because I'm saying it all about myself in my head. Come on, Grandpa. Da, 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 da. I could have oh. gaffed them for you. No, it would probably lost them anyway if you did that. <laughs> yeah, right. Sour grapes. George's Tackle Locker. Brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Keeping your boat clean and looking sharp has its advantages. Aside from showing that you have pride in your fishing machine, you'll get top dollar when it's time to sell and upgrade. Think of it in terms of an investment. 
Keeping on top of your boat's appearance also saves you cleaning time and elbow grease over the long haul. For example, using a washing wax like those offered by Starbright leaves a protective film on hull and outboard cowlings. Therefore, any chum or fish blood is easily rinsed off with a washdown hose. Furthermore, periodic applications of Starbright's Boat Guard, the spray style quick wax, adds an even deeper protective shield to guard against damage from the sun and elements. Starbright's non skid deck wax offers the same protection for your deck. All apply Starbright's Boat Guard and non skid wax quarterly. So, when it's time to clean my boat, I'm that much more ahead of the game time wise. A quick freshwater rinsing, a good soaping with a wash and wax and deck cleaning with Starbright's non-skid deck cleaner and my boat will be looking like new in short order. For the full range of Starbright's boat care product, visit Starbright.com. Mercury Performance Stats, Miami Day County Offshore. Seas, two to three feet. Power, triple Mercury Verado four to horsepower outboards. Speed, 42 miles per hour. Total miles, 68. Total fuel burned, 65 gallons. George Polk Robles World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Visit flakeys.com. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Order yours today at papaspilar.com. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. With baits positioned at the surface and deep within the water column, Harry, Vernon III and I continue our quest for kingfish, dolphin, and sailfish. We're fishing off Miami and in the teeth of a major rip. And so I'm looking at my kite baits, and you gotta watch your kite baits pretty much all day long. So I'm doing my job on my side of the boat. Well, George's got his side of the boat pretty busy. All of a sudden, he hooks a dolphin, and I'm like, ah, oh, great. And, you know, I turn around, look to see he's got a dolphin on him, whatever. He's fighting this dolphin, and all of a sudden, I see the other Rod bends over, so I grab the other rod. Wait, I got him. No, I got him. Oh, that's my fish. No. Yes, I got him. No, 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 no. At that point, turned into the argument, well, who had the deed to the property? The property being the dolphin. So he's saying it's his fish, and I'm saying it's my fish, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it was his fish, because that fish ate both of his baits. Now, if he was paying attention, the fish would have only eaten one bait. Harry and I are sitting bickering whose fish is going to be, like we're not going to get back to the dock and I'm going to give him half and I'm going to take half. And if that wasn't enough craziness, the rod bends on one of the kite baits that had popped. What do you have going on? I don't know. Feels like another hammerhead. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, kite rod is bent over double. So he left, he made me leave my position just so I can't see the bite. Feels like a ton of weight. Oh, it's jumping, sailfish! All right, sailfish! And sure enough, we hook a sailfish. Now we got a sailfish on. So we were able to get the dolphin in the boat and chase down this sailfish, which was pretty exciting. You're all right? Yep, you let me know if you're gaining. So okay. I can judge the speed. I'm good. You my speed all right for you? Are you gaining? Yeah. All right. Think this is the leader, maybe. All right, just get on the leader. Maybe. He's out there about what, 40, 50 feet? No, he's still further. There's your leader right there. George? What? Did you bring your passport? I in my green box. Yes, I have my right, passport. All right, here he is. Woo! Oh, Lord. You got him. There he is, Harry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I hate things with a bill on him, George. <laughs> uh, I mean, try to get him to slide around here. So Harry gets it on there, gets a legal release, fish runs off again, pressures it again, comes by the boat. This fish is doing some remarkable jumps right at the boat. Finally, Harry got it to where I could build a fish. How you doing, George? <laughs> Turn more left. I am. Here, Harry. Hey, George. In my pocket, get those pliers and give me a cut right here. I am not reaching in your pocket for anything. <laughs> yeah, right here, buddy. All right, beautiful. All right, moving in gear, we'll, re we'll re make sure he's ready to go. Got it alongside the boat, released the fish in great shape. What a way to end the day. Oh, Harry, Woo. I gotta tell you, you and I have been through some crazy stuff, oh. fishing-wise, and that, that would be somewhere near the top. That's pretty close. What can I tell you about Harry that I haven't really said about him before? Because I like to dub him, he's a uh, America's favorite 61-year-old teenager. You know, we're both in our 60s, 
<laughs> we, but we think we're 18 and 20. How far out about? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He can't hear. He just says, yeah, to everything I ask him. He's deaf. Yeah. But it's just so much fun. We have such a great time fishing together. And I hope we got another 20 years or more to go with us, because it's just going to get funnier every time we fish. I love the guy like my brother. He's just, uh, you know, thoroughly enjoy Harry Vernon the third, and I couldn't imagine not going fishing with him. Well, I could, but I, I still enjoy fishing with him. Another George and Harry adventure. If you'd like to keep up with our fishing adventures, please follow me on Instagram. I'm at George Poveromo. On Facebook, I'm at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. And you can view our episodes at any time on our YouTube channel, George Poveromo TV. We'll see you out on the water.